Andy, we are at the river, just off of Dock and Pear Street. And I want to show you exactly what's going on right now. A dive team is out here, and they just got one of the divers back into the water. The storm's winds were so powerful that it knocked part of the roof of this house off, sent wood like this into this car, and smashed out the back window of this other car. Normally, investigators bring out their dog to go into the house and check things out, looking for clues. Yeah, Heather, right now, when you buy a pack of smokes, there's the Surgeon General's warning right here on the side of that pack. But the federal government wants more graphic images, like the one you see behind me. I'm wearing these special gloves. It's just one of dozens of tools Dominion crews have on their big bucket trucks. We want to show you what it looks like on a sidewalk here. You look down right here. Real slushy, you can see as I kick with my ugly boot. Dion Guillory has a preview. He's all decked out in his Rams gear. <laughs> yeah, Gray, there's a checklist you have to go through before the game. You've got the t shirt, check, the bandana, check, and of course the game food. This is NBC 12 News. Thanks for watching 12 News at 6. I'm Dion Guillory, and we begin tonight with your forecast. For much of the day, it's been downright dreary, and it looks like we may not be out of the woods just yet. Meteorologist Ross Runners in the First Warning Weather Center keeping an eye on the risk for some severe storms later tonight. And Ross, there's some activity out there. Yes, there is, Dion. A brawl on the Virginia State University campus led to the arrest of five people early this morning. Today, volunteers will be cleaning up Richmond's Evergreen Cemetery ahead of tomorrow's dedication. A heroic eight-year-old boy was laid to rest in Wise County today. He's being credited with saving the lives of his mother and younger brothers as their trailer went up in flames earlier this week. Drew Hinesley has this heartbreaking story. Two people have been arrested and charged following the abduction of a 14-year-old Virginia girl, but police say the abduction wasn't all what it seemed. A Richmond family buries their murdered loved one just as U.S. Marshals make an arrest in connection to the robbery and fatal shooting. 27-year-old Michael Robinson Jr. is now behind bars. As you can see, this is what's left of the house right now. You can see part of the siding is off, and there's also debris just left on the front porch. When firefighters got here early this morning, all they saw were flames. When crews arrived on the scene, the fire was intense, and there was a lot of smoke. Tron Little could feel it in his house next door. The flame was so uh, big, man, it was, the heat was intensified in my house. I felt like I was in the oven in my house. Tron says he got up, saw the fire, and called 911. The flame looked like they were like nine feet in the air away from um, the top of the roof over there at the next door. It was real high. It was catching tree limbs on fire, everything. Firefighters say part of the second floor collapsed. Another concern was a power line down on the front of the house. Dominion crews were called to check it out. They discovered the line was safe, and crews continued to try to put out the fire. Bernard Massenberg is the home's owner. He watched the whole thing from across the street. I got a call this morning that the house was burning about 6 o'clock, so I came around in there, and this is what I found. Bernard says he was renovating the house to rent it out. He says he's had some trouble here before, but never anything like this. We've had some vandalism here, and uh, Saturday I discovered that someone had been in there and tried to set the house afire. Normally, investigators bring out their dog to go into the house and check things out looking for clues, but because this house is so unstable, they decide to go in themselves and take samples back to the lab. It's devastating, you know, because I, I was looking forward to uh, renovating the house, making it nice. The homeowner says he has insurance, but he's not sure if he's going to rebuild. In South Richmond, I'm Dion Guillory for NBC 12 News. The biggest concern right now is the building behind me. Students haven't had classes here because it's being renovated. So far, half a million dollars has been poured into this renovation project, and the school board is concerned that it may not be ready for the January 9th start date. One by one, these students at Patrick Henry Charter School start their last day before winter break walking the neighborhood singing Christmas carols. They currently attend classes in Woodland Heights Baptist Church. It's the building used by Patrick Henry ever since it opened in August 2010. Construction crews are hard at work on what will be the school's permanent home a couple of blocks away. We have so much momentum. We are moving into our permanent location. We're going to be there starting with school January 9th. Kristen Larson is the vice president of the board of directors at Patrick Henry. This has been three years in the making. She says kids will start having classes in this building January 9th. But that date is one of several concerns for the Richmond School Board. In this letter sent by Chair Kimberly Bridges, the board is also worried the amount of money the school is raising will not be enough. Larson says there's no need for concern. We raised nearly a million dollars in grants and donations. Some of that has gone towards the building. 
Some of that has gone to, towards startup equipment because we're a new school. The board is also concerned with the turnover rate of teachers and staff. Larson says the turnover rate is normal for any new school. We're going through normal growing pains that any new school, especially a charter school in Virginia, where it's very challenging, would go through but um, we're moving in a positive direction. At this point, the school board doesn't have a backup plan just in case this building's not ready for kids after winter break. The school's charter is due for renewal after next school year. Reporting in South Richmond, I'm Dion Guillory for NBC 12. I mean, we're neighbors. <laughs> Faye Coleman and Charles Townsend know the true meaning of friendship. After weathering Saturday storms, they, along with neighbors, are helping each other clean up. Family and friends have come through and bought tarps and um, just really rallied together. What's described as a tornado was seen in DeWitt and ripped the roof off of Faye's home. Her 16-year-old son was inside as the twister moved through. He knew to run for cover. He was in the closet with a mattress pulled over top of him. As long as my child was fine, I was really happy. The storm left behind more damage at Charles's house. We saw the tornado. It touched down down here at the pond. Uh, it blew down trees, all the sheds, buildings down here. It tore down. It took the roof off, everything. The storm's winds were so powerful that it knocked part of the roof of this house off, sent wood like this into this car, and smashed out the back window of this other car. Trees, it, wood, it didn't break off. It just popped them out, you know, right at the ground. And it wasn't just trees. In the Five Forks area near the battlefield, this power pole just snapped, leaving power lines on the ground. A barn's roof blown off, the siding tossed into a tree. With all the damage, everyone back in DeWitt, thankful no one here was hurt. One good thing did anybody get hurt. Yeah. So that's a plus. That's a plus. All this stuff yeah. can be replaced, exactly. you know, but, you know, didn't anybody lose a exactly. life, thank goodness. Exactly. Faye and Charles prepared to finish cleaning things up Sunday morning. In Dinwiddie County, I'm Dion Guillory for NBC 12.